Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to talk about something I guess a little bit different, you're going to learn a little bit of geography and science. Now this is actually something I've been doing for a while when trying to find a really nice place um, in South Korea where I can actually use my telescope and possibly look at the stars. But there was a problem and today I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Now if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now because there's more videos that will teach you stuff coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. So here I was using this light pollution map, uh, the link for which I posted in the description below. And it's a map that I've used previously when I was living in Canada. I actually used this map when trying to find a nice location where it's dark enough for me to actually look at the stars and see, uh, you know, things like Milky Way galaxy and so on and so forth. Now in South Korea it's very challenging. Uh, this is essentially the country of South Korea. I live somewhere right here. And as you can see, the red and the yellow indicates that it's very, very, very bright. This means that it's literally impossible to see anything in the sky. It's just way too bright. I can barely maybe see Venus and Mars if they're sort of um, relatively easy to see in the sky, but anything else would be close to impossible. There's almost not a single star in the sky. It's kind of sad, actually. For a person uh, doing a lot of space videos, it's a little bit sad. North Korea, on the other hand, is very very dark but i can't really go there because no one can go there unless you have special permissions now as i was actually looking around and as i was browsing around trying to find this you know a nice location for myself and where i could possibly take my telescope that i haven't really used in south korea at all i discovered something unusual specifically as i was looking around here now i know there's a there's a big island called jeju island right here in the south but then what what is that and what is that and what exactly is that so the, all of these indicate basically settlements. Like if you actually look right here, this is a big city. This is a city of several million people. This is Seoul. There's like over 10 million people here. What is this? I had no idea. I looked at the map and I'm gonna show you the Google Maps here. And so here's the same picture from Google Maps. So there's an island right here. There's another island right here. And there's another island right here. So that's that one island, that's this, this other island, and that's that third island. So what is all this other stuff that's right here in the water? There's also even more of it here and here. And as a matter of fact, as I looked around the map, around the world, I've discovered quite a lot of it. There is just tons of these strange, almost like city-like settlements. Now, if I was a conspiracy theorist, I would probably think aliens, or I don't know, government, or something. But I'm not a conspiracy theorist. As a matter of fact, I'm a scientist, I'm a mathematician. I love to rationalize and I love to discover uh, using logic. And uh, the first thing that I discovered was by browsing online, by looking for articles, I've discovered um, a very similar event happening right here, very close to Argentina. Uh, this is the Falkland Islands. Uh, this is a, a contested territory between England and Argentina. But right above um, Falkland Islands, there is this phenomenon yet again. Now, have you guessed yet what it is? Can you guess? What do you think it is? Well, it's actually really, really simple. And it's kind of, I would say, even scary. This right here, and I'm actually going to zoom in just to show you how, how huge, how prominent this is. Like, this is 100 kilometers. Or I guess this would be 50 miles. Look how big this is. This is the size of a huge, huge city. Bigger than any city we know. This is essentially fishing boats. These are fishing boats that have ridiculously bright lights on them that use these lights to attract various uh, sea life, but specifically, usually they fish for, uh, for squid. Now, this is kind of what this fishing boat looks like in real life. It is a very, very, very bright uh, fishing boat, and it's actually kind of illegal to use these, but because this is in international waters, nobody is there to police it. What these fishing boats do is essentially use these really, really, really bright lights to attract millions and billions of these squid that you see right here. If you don't actually know what a squid looks like, this would be a squid. So these little creatures that are kind of, I guess, similar to octopi, or sorry, octopuses, which is a proper term, um, they're basically attracted to light. They, they love light, they, they go toward the light, even though they usually live in a deep ocean. And they're also uh, consumed by many different cultures. 
uh, and they're definitely consumed by everyone in Korea. It's a very, very popular meal. It's a very popular meal in Japan as well, which is why both Korea and Japan have so many of these lights pretty much uh, everywhere around them. So you can kind of tell the, the popular fishing grounds by looking at these unusual lights where there is no other land available. And it's actually pretty easy to locate them. If this was uh, an enforced law, if this was a law that uh, the governments around the world would actually enforce, it would be pretty easy to arrest all of these illegal fishers because, uh, or I guess fishermen that is, uh, because basically what they're doing is technically illegal because it then leads to overfishing. Um, if there's no more squid left in that region, uh, there is going to be a huge misbalance of the ecosphere, which will then lead to a, a sudden explosion of um, creatures that we don't really want to have, like, for example, sudden explosion of algae, which may be toxic to people and to fish and to everything else, which can then lead to a huge catastrophe in the ocean. But basically, these really, really large, very, very bright spots are on par in brightness with a very large, very well-developed city. As a matter of fact, if you were to compare the total light here with a total light here, it would be almost exactly the same. So these are almost like huge cities, floating cities with possibly thousands, I don't think it's millions, but possibly thousands of different boats that uh, constantly fish for millions and possibly even billions of squid and many other fish, I guess. And uh, then essentially bring them back to South Korea, to Japan or to Argentina, wherever they're from, and obviously eat them. Now, there's actually quite a lot of other unexplained um, light effects around the world. There's a lot of other really, really bright um, events that are kind of difficult to explain, are kind of difficult to um, comprehend without really using um, crazy theories, conspiracy theories, that is. Uh, but interestingly, um, it, they are all explainable. Like, for example, uh, another famous uh, case would be in Australia. Like, for example, uh, here, there's like, there's no, nothing, there's no settlements. There's absolutely nothing right in this area that's about to load. And here as well, like there is, these are not cities. So what do you think they are? Can you guess? Can, can you guess what this is? Because that's definitely not a city either. Well, it's very likely to do something with some sort of a gas deposit that's being mined. And uh, the uh, excess gas is usually released through really, really bright fires. Or it's possibly something completely different. And if you have an explanation for these particular lights or these lights in Australia, do post it in the comments below. But uh, all in all, I was actually uh, kind of at first terrified of seeing such a huge amount of these lights uh, pretty much in every major sea and um, body of water around Korea, around Japan and around China, uh, because this really kind of suggests that we are kind of overfishing. We're definitely eating and killing a lot more fish than we should. Uh, and not just squid, of course, but other animals as well that might be falling into these nets that are attracted to light. This is a huge amount of boats. It's uh, incomprehensible how many boats this is, and it is definitely not something we should be doing. But I guess this is something for South Korea, for Japan, and for China to resolve using their own laws, which I'm not sure they'll be doing anytime soon, because they definitely like their squid. But I guess the coolest thing about these light pollution maps is that it's really, really interesting to actually explore them and to try to figure out, so what are these little spots? What is going on here? These are probably fishing boats too, but maybe it's something completely different. And then if you actually go on Google and start searching for, for example, like right now we are near Thailand and you start searching for what is happening in the West Sea uh, around Thailand, around Burma, what is going on there? And then you might actually discover something really unusual like I did with uh, the discovery of the overfishing of squid in Korea. And if you actually do find something really cool on these pollution maps and you discover something that I haven't covered, something really, really strange or something really, really awesome, please post it in the comments below so we can actually explore it in one of the future videos. I'm posting the link both for this light pollution map and also the article from NASA that actually talks about the overfishing of squid in Argentina and that actually even shows you some of the light pollution pictures from before and also from now. And you can definitely explore this um, in your free time and learn something about it as well. Let me know if you find something cool. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with someone who likes to learn things using video games or just learn stuff in general. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye bye.